using the PlanetScale API to manage your databases. Hey everyone, my name is Brian Morrison and I'm on the developer education team here at PlanetScale. Today we're going to look at how you can use the PlanetScale API to manage your databases within PlanetScale. We're going to start by creating a service token which is used to authenticate against the API. We'll then use the API in Postman to create a branch off of an existing database. We'll make a change to that new branch we just created and then we will merge the changes in by creating a deploy request and approving it using the API. Let's take a look. I'm in the main overview tab of the PlanetScale dashboard. This is the view you'll see immediately upon logging in. So to create a service token, I'm going to head up to the settings tab, select service tokens on the left, and then click new service token. I'll give my service token a name and hit enter. And I'll be displayed the ID of the service token as well as the token itself. While the ID is retrievable after the fact, this token will not be displayed once this modal is closed. So you'll need to copy this down now. Once you've copied the token out from this modal, go ahead and click continue to token permissions. Service tokens have granular permissions, which means in order to allow them to perform operations using the API, you'll need to grant the token at that specific operation. They are scoped down to the organization level, as well as individual databases within the organization. To grant organization permissions to a service token, click on the button that says add organization permissions. You'll be shown a list of different permissions that you can grant this specific token. For the sake of this demo, I'm going to select Read Organization and Read Databases and click Save Permissions. Now I need to grant access to our TravelDB database. I'll click Add a Database, and since TravelDB is the only database I have in this account, it's pre-selected for me. And then from the list of permissions, I will select Read Database, Create Branch, Read Branch, Delete Branch. And then under deploy request, we will select create deploy request, read deploy request, and approve deploy request. And then click save permissions. Okay, and now our service token is configured to use with the API for our demo. So I have Postman open in a blank workspace with a single empty collection that's already been created named PlanetScale API collection. Let's start by creating a request to list the organizations that the service token has access to. So I'm going to click add request, and I will name this request list organizations. And then inside of the request URL field, we'll enter the base URL for all API requests for PlanetScale, which is HTTPS colon slash slash API dot PlanetScale dot com forward slash V1. And then to get the organizations, the route is organizations. And the service token itself is going to go in the authorization header. So I'm going to expand out my left column here, which is all the information that I will send along with the request. I'm going to select the headers tab here. And I'm going to create a new header named authorization. I'm going to close this up to get more room on the value side. And then the value for the authorization header is going to be uh, the service token ID colon the service token with no scheme prefix. So I'll paste in my ID. And then I'll paste in the service token itself. And then let's hit send and see what happens. Okay, I'm going to minimize all the request side and see the response. And you can see we have a list of the organizations that this service token has access to, of which is just the one named ps devet Next, let's check to see what databases that this token has access to. So I'm going to duplicate this request, and we're going to rename it list databases. And then in order to see the databases, we'll update the route and add another path here that contains the organization name, which is ps devet forward slash databases. Click send. And you can see this is all the information regarding the specific database that we're going to access, which in this case is travel underscore DB. Now to see the branches, let's go ahead and duplicate the request one more time. And we'll say list, we'll rename this to list branches. And then we'll also put forward slash the name of our database, which is travel underscore DB, and then branches for the route. Click send. And we can see this lists out just the single main branch that is available with no other branches. So now to create a branch, let's duplicate this request one more time. Rename this to create a branch. And then this is actually going to be a post request and it does accept a body. So let's expand out our request values here. I'm going to select body, change it to a raw request type, and then we'll change it to JSON, which will automatically add the content type header and set that to application slash JSON. I'm going to open a set of curly brackets here, and then we need to pass in the name of the branch to the body. In this case, we're going to create a branch named dev. And then the parent branch, parent underscore branch is the name of the field here, will tell the PlanetScale API which the source branch should be created. Since all we have is a main branch of our database, we'll just type in main, 
save this and click send. And if you've got a 201 status, that means that your branch was successfully created. Now, if I go back to my list branches request and I re-execute this, we should now see that there are two branches. Our first one is still there, which is the main branch. And if I scroll down a bit, you'll also see we have a dev branch here as well now. Now let's head back to the PlanetScale dashboard and use the console to make a change to our dev branch. Back in the PlanetScale dashboard, I'm going to select the travel DB database from the dashboard and select the console tab up top. Now let's change the target branch that we want to connect the console to, to dev, and then click connect. Now to inspect the schema of this branch, I'm going to type in show tables. And there's only a single table named hotels. And then I'm going to describe that, describe hotels. And we can see there are four columns. There is an ID column, a name, an address, and a stars. This is supposed to represent a hotel with the name and address being self-explanatory and the stars being synonymous of like a rating you would see on a hotel's website. So let's add a description field to this. I will say alter table hotels, add description. And we'll say this is gonna be a var car field of 500 and hit enter. And then if I describe hotels again, you should see we now have that description field. Now let's head back to Postman and create a deploy request to merge the changes of the dev branch into the main branch. Creating a deploy request is also gonna use a post action type. So let's duplicate our create a branch request here. Let's rename this to create a deploy request. And in the URL itself, I'm going to change the branches route to deploy hyphen requests. And then we also have to specify some fields in the body here. So I'm going to clear this out, open a fresh set of curly brackets. We're going to set the branch name is going to be dev since this is the branch we want to create the deploy request on. And then into underscore branch is the field you want to name you want to use for your target branch and let's specify main save this request and then i'm going to send it and again we got a 201 status back which means the deploy request was successfully created one thing inside of this response body worth noting is if you scroll down towards the bottom there is this number field here that is the identifier of the deploy request that can be used in order to review details about the deploy request itself so let's do that now i'm going to duplicate this request again to save me from having to type out the full path. And we'll rename this to read a deploy request. I'm gonna change my action type to get, and then hit send. And this will list out our deploy request. If I put hyphen one after this and I hit send, we'll get just that individual deploy request back. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And then if I scroll down, I'm going to call out a couple of things that are worth looking at. The first being on line 19, we can see we have a state of open. And then in line 20, there is a deployment state of ready. If you scroll down a bit further, you can actually see the operations that are going to be executed. So under deploy operation summaries, this is an array of the different things that merging the deploy request is going to do. You can see on line 64 here, we have the actual DDL statement that's going to be executed against the target branch to create the new column. So now let's go ahead and see how we can merge these changes into the main branch. The first thing we need to do is change the state of the deploy request to approve. So to do that, let's uh, copy one of our post requests here. I'm going to duplicate the deploy request one. And we'll change this to approve a deploy request. This is still going to be a post, so we can leave the action the same. At the end of this route here, I'm going to put a forward slash one, which is the ID of the deploy request we want to approve. And then forward slash reviews is the route. And then I'll go into the body tab here, and we're going to clear this out, open a new body, and we're going to set state to approved. Save this and click send. Okay, we can see the state was changed to approved. Next up, let's queue the deploy request so these changes can actually be merged into our main branch. So let's one more time duplicate one of these post requests. I'm going to change this to change the name to queue a deploy request. And this is still going to be a post here. We're going to get go to body and we're going to eliminate the body out of here since we don't need, actually need to send anything along with it. And we're going to change the route to deploy and click send. Now we can see the deployment state is changed to a state of queued. So now we just need to wait a few minutes before we can check the state again and see if the changes have been merged successfully. Okay, now that a few minutes have passed, I'm going to go ahead and go to read a deploy request again. And let's send this request one more time just as is. 
Okay, and we can see now there is a new block added here saying closed by. We can see it was closed by a service token. And if I scroll down just, just a bit more, we can see the state is now closed and the deployment state is complete. And once again, just to reinforce this, I'm back inside of the planet scale dashboard in the overview tab of the travel DB database. If I select deploy requests here, we can see that the deploy request with a number of one has a status of deployed. If I select this, we can review all the operations right within the dashboard that we had just performed through the API. And if I go to schema changes, we can see that that description field was now merged into the main branch. After watching this video, you should have a good understanding on how you can manage your databases using the PlanetScale API. For more information on how to use the API specifically, go to api-docs.planetscale.com. And for more general resources on how to use PlanetScale, go to our website, planetscale.com, and check out the documentation portal and blogs where we're adding new content all the time. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.